internet it is super bright outside I apologize for my lack of makeup might be kind of scary looking at me um, we have moved um, we're in our new house there are still lots of boxes in the garage a whole entire storage shed full of boxes yet to be moved but the amount of things that we need to survive like dishes and towels and clothing and stuff like that and the majority of our big big furniture has been moved um, I apologize for not giving you a proper house tour but I'll show you where I'm at right now I'm on my deck in my backyard and the Oscar's here and Sadie's here and this is the yard from left to right. That tree that you're seeing is an ornamental cherry. It doesn't produce cherries, but it's really pretty. Um, I don't know what that flowering tree is called, but this is a dogwood, and this is a Bartlett pear. And then that really pretty purple one that you see is a red tip tree and it I know the flowers are purple but the or a red bud tree um, the leaves are really bright brilliant flaming red before it bursts out with all these purple flowers and it continues down there I think that's a magnolia it hasn't bloomed but it's got little buds all over it right now so that's the backyard Beyond the fence, about a quarter of an acre further, is our property line from left where that fence is to right where that fence is. So here I am, I'm on the deck, here's the deck, and that's a picture window into our kitchen. And then this is the most beautiful part of the house. This is the sunroom. And we did purchase some furniture for it the new chairs and table that you see there and a couch and the couch that came with it came with two left arms so we can't assemble it until we receive a replacement right arm so somewhere in america right now maybe in america it was made in china so i don't know if they buy these things in china but somewhere someplace somebody has two right arms and we have two left arms I think it'd be easy to swap that out but I don't know so here we are we're in the center room it's heated it has AC nice ceiling fans and it's really pretty got an Easter lily to decorate it and the previous owner left her plant stand here for me so, and as you can hear, we've got lots and lots of different birds out there just chirping it up. We have um, cardinals and blue jays and, of course, robins and doves and starlings. And um, we've seen a lot of hawks flying over, but I don't know what other birds we've got. I, I'm not real... A super bird watcher but uh, we're here and mostly moved in today is Thursday and we have been moving non-stop load after load after load since Friday right after we closed um, I'm on chemo today is my last day of cycle 9 so today's day 14 my hands are bright red and my feet are bright red and I'm not going to show you my feet and that is you know I'm sure your hands get chafed from moving lots of boxes but I also have the Zolota causing nerve damage and hand and foot syndrome that's fun um, my arm is super swollen I don't know if you can see how puffy my hand is we tried to wrap it this morning managed to get it into the uh, the arm sleeve um, it was like stuffing a sausage 
and about two hours into it, I developed the biggest welt. It was like I had put a rubber band around my wrist. And I don't know if you've ever seen what that does, but it just really cut into my skin by about a quarter of an inch and I was super uncomfortable. So I removed my stocking and I'm doing a lot of lymphatic drainage, uh, massage, and the exercises, putting my arm up, squeezing my fingers, that kind of hurts though, and um, jazz hands. Um, Sadie really likes this. Sadie! 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 You're on camera. Do you see the peoples? What people? <laughs> she really likes this room a lot. She sits in the chair and listens to the birds, and because she's She's window height when she's sitting in the chair. She can see more stuff flying by, butterflies and birds and stuff. And um, as soon as we're unpacked and settled more, I will show you the rest of the house. Um, so that is pretty much all that's going on with me. Oh, except for one thing, and this is a controversial thing, but I'd be really remiss if I didn't discuss it on the blog um, or vlog whatever you call it <clears throat> okay so on Friday tomorrow I was scheduled to have a PET scan I have in the, as you, if you read my previous blog on Leslie's cancer confession you saw a detailed list of all the tests that I've had over the past three years um, not to mention the two years previous when they thought that I had had um, fibromyalgia. I had had a lot of tests, including blood tests, and I didn't count those. So, anyway, back to the, the point that I was trying to make. Tomorrow I was scheduled for a PET scan. On Monday, in the midst of moving, I received a phone call from the pet scan place telling me that I had not paid my out-of-pocket expenses for the year and that this test was going to cost me six hundred dollars. Well you you I did the jaw drop. Ah, uh, couldn't believe it. I was like six hundred dollars. Okay, so follow along with me. I have a pet scan every three months. My out-of-pocket expenses for the year are thirty three thirty three. $3,333.33. I don't know where they came up with that number. That's the number. So if I pay $600 every three months for the next year, I will only reach $2,400. Unless I have some weird symptom that requires me to have an MRI or a CAT scan or some other, you know, really expensive, costly... I will not reach my out-of-pocket because it doesn't include my co-pays or my regular lab work. And I, I sat down after I spoke with her. I told her I'd have to call her back. And, and of course, she was very considerate and said, hey, we can set up a payment plan for you. And I sat down and I thought long and hard about it. And I decided I was going to cancel that appointment. Not because I'm being rebellious or, you know, trying to buck the authority of my doctor who ordered this test. But I thought a few things. One of the first things was, yeah, my arm is swollen. My ankles are swollen. I'm tired because I'm going through chemo and it causes fatigue. But I don't have any lung issues that are preventing me from breathing or hearing any gurgling from fluid build up. My hips hurt, but that's because I have microfractures from the previous tumors that were there. I don't have any symptoms that lead me to believe I have cancer that has spread anywhere else in my body or that is active in any of the previous sites in my body. So thinking that, thinking, okay, just because you can order a test every three months and the insurance will approve it, if I'm not experiencing any symptoms that make my doctor believe there's a new 
site of cancer. Why should I have it every three months? That's the controversial part. Because I know there are people out there that will say, you need to have that test because it sees it at the cellular level and you can prevent it before it becomes a full-blown tumor. Well, that is true. But my tumor markers are in the normal range. So that would indicate I don't have any tumors in my body right now. Right? I mean, logically, common sensely wise, wouldn't that be what that indicates? And that's what my doctor tells me that indicates. And she, he says, don't freak out if it goes up a couple of points because you're still within the normal range and a couple of points is like nothing. So I called back and I canceled which made me feel free because what it did is it gave me back a day of my life and it gave me power over my cancer and the decisions that I make in my treatment and my diagnoses of any you know, future outbreaks. I had previously discussed with my doctor not having it every three months. And he said, after this test, if it comes back clean, we'll go every six months. Well, no, I don't think so. I think what we'll do is we'll go, and if I have a new symptom, then we'll order a test. And if this doctor has a problem with that, then I might need to find a different doctor. Which is sad, because I really like this doctor, and so far everything's gone good. But, um, yeah, trying to take a little bit of control back of the time that I have. And part of that is saying no to every little test that they order. So what do you think, Internet? What do you think? If a doctor orders a test, does that obligate you to have it? Do you think that every little test that's ordered is necessary? Or do you think that just because an insurance will pay 80% of a test that you should do it because to me $2,400 a year is a lot of money and I could buy a really cheap used car I could go on a trip I could pay my daughter's college tuition um, there are a lot of things I could do with that money. So anyway, what, what are your thoughts? I really have appreciated all of the comments that I'm getting, especially the ones that are over uh, Google+. Plus. A lot of people have been responding and replying, and I really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. Um, so leave a comment what you think about the yard and the deck and the sunroom, and leave comments about what you think about diagnostic testing and whether as a patient you have to just do what your doctor says or you have the right to say I don't think so this is not always necessary so put them in the comments below Google plus it uh, put it on my Facebook or um, this will also be on YouTube so feel free free to comment on YouTube Thank you so much for stopping by and viewing this blog. There will be an, a written blog on Leslie's Cancer Confession that coincides with what you're seeing here in the video. You want to say goodbye to the people? Oh, Mom. Oh, Mom. Bye, people. Bye, guys. Thanks for stopping by.